Disaccharides and polysaccharides are going to be the topic of this lesson. You know, we've spent the first two lessons in this chapter on carbohydrates focusing on monosaccharides, so only fitting that we spend just a little bit of time talking about the disaccharides. We'll dive, dive right in here. So first two disaccharides we'll look at are sucrose and lactose. You want to know some key characteristics about each of these disaccharides. You kind of know, want to know where they're from, maybe what their function is. Uh, and then you want to know what monosaccharides they're comprised of and what glycosidic linkage joins them together. So if we start with sucrose, and sucrose is what you normally think of in, you know, when you're in your kitchen as sugar. Well, I mean, some of you might be like, well, actually, I think of Splenda as sugar, Chad. Well, good for you, but if you were going to put a, a spoonful of sugar and not a sugar substitute in your coffee, you'd be putting in sucrose. So table sugar or cane sugar, that's sucrose. Uh, in this case, the two monomers here, the two monosaccharides, are glucose and fructose. And if we want to get more specific, we could say, well, it's D-glucose and D-fructose. So, but again, nature only incorporates D-sugar, so that's not, you know, super informative there. But even more specific than that, we can say it's alpha-D-glucose and beta-D-fructose. Now, it turns out we only got to identify the alpha and the beta if they are part of the glycoside, the glycosidic linkage. Because in that case, they won't be involved in mutarotation, and so being just alpha or just beta would be possible. So, however, if, you know, if it's not, uh, the anomeric carbon's not involved in the glycoside, then on that side, mutarotation's gonna be possible, and you'll find it's both a mix of alpha and beta. And typically what's customary, when that's the case, like it is over here for lactose, we'll find out, there's your anomeric carbon on the monomer on the right. Oftentimes you'll see the OH just drawn off to the side, not up, not down, so you can't identify it as alpha or beta, because what they're saying is that in solution, you'll get a mixture of the two because mutarotation's gonna take place. All right, but that's not the case in sucrose. In sucrose, the anomeric carbon is involved in forming the glycoside on both sides. So we've got the anomeric carbon for glucose here. Notice that's carbon number one, bonded to two oxygens. That's how, you, again, you can identify it as the anomeric. So that's carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, and then on fructose, we're drawing this a little bit funky. Normally we draw this the other way around. So we have to draw it a little bit funky in order to join these in this one, two fashion. And so there's carbon one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So, and being able to identify this as alpha or beta is a little bit tricky as we'll see, but you really gotta know that textbook definition, the real universal definition of what alpha or beta means. Now, in the case of glucose here, we see that the oxygen here on the anomeric carbon points down. So our CH2OH group points up, that's what makes it alpha. So in the case of fructose, we see that our oxygen points down, our CH2OH group on the other side of the sugar points down as well, that cis to each other, and that is what makes it beta. And so in this case, we're linking carbon one of one of the monosaccharides to carbon two of the other monosaccharide. That's what makes it a one-two glycosidic linkage. And if either or both of those are the anomeric carbons, then you gotta specifically say whether they're alpha or beta as well. And since they both are, that's what we're gonna have to say alpha one and then beta two glycosidic linkage. And that's what you should know about sucrose. You should know that sucrose is a uh, comprised of two monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, and it is an alpha-1, beta-2 glycosidic linkage. And notice if you memorize the linkage is alpha-1, beta-2, that would automatically tell you that it's alpha for glucose and beta for fructose in this case. Uh, so you wouldn't necessarily have to remember the specifics beyond just memorizing the linkage. Now if we take a look at lactose, lactose is milk sugar. So all of the different disaccharides we're going to take a look at, one of the monomers at the least is going to be glucose. And so you just gotta remember what's the second one. And so in the case of sucrose, it was fructose. So in the case of lactose, it's galactose, which makes it a little easy to memorize what that second one is. So if you, as long as you remember the first one's gonna be glucose, then the second one's the one you gotta remember. And for lactose, it is galactose. And specifically, we've got beta degalactose and deglucose. So and if we take a look at the carbons involved, it's carbon number one. So for galactose, and that is the anomeric carbon bonded to two oxygens. So remember the rest around, three, four, five, and six. So but carbon one involved in the, in the glycosidic linkage, and in this case, the oxygen points up, the CH2OH group points up, since they're cis to each other, that's gonna make this beta. So, and that's why it's identified in the glycosidic linkage there. Then on the other side, this is carbon four, and notice carbon four here is not uh, the anomeric carbon, it's not bonded to two oxygens, and so that's why there's no alpha or beta designation on that four, it's just beta one, four glycosidic linkage. So, and again, there's carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, one thing to note here as well between these two, uh, when you've got, again, on a disaccharide, we talked about this in the last lesson, but when you've got one of the two anomerics 
as, that's free as a hemiacetal and not part of the glycoside, then muta rotation is not only possible, but also this would work as a, or, or function as a reducing sugar. It would get oxidized by either Benedict's or Tollens reagents. So notice lactose is a reducing sugar. So, but sucrose is not. The anomeric carbons on both monosaccharides are not free. They're both tied up as a glycoside. And when they're tied up as a glycoside, again, that's when they will not act as a reducing sugar. They are not oxidizable. The next two disaccharides we'll take a look at are maltose and cellobiose. And both of these are derived from the breakdown of a polysaccharide. So we get maltose from the breakdown of starch. We get cellobiose from the breakdown of cellulose. All right, take a look at maltose and cellobiose. Notice they are both comprised of two glucose monosaccharides, both of them. What's largely different is what is the glycosidic linkage between the two. And in the case of maltose here, we see that it's carbon one, so uh, of one of the glucoses, so there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Carbon one, bottom two oxygens, that's the anomeric carbon. The oxygen points down, the CH2H group on the rest of the molecule points up, and that's what makes this alpha, since those two groups are trans to each other. But then on the other side, that's carbon four. It's not carbon one, it's not the anomeric carbon, it's not bottom two oxygens. The one bottom two oxygens is this one over here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so that's why it's an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. We only had to identify the alpha uh, for the first since it was the only one that involved the anomeric carbon. And once again, since one of the two monosaccharides is a hemiacetal and it's anomeric carbon, it'll be in equilibrium with its open chain form and muta rotations possible, and it will act as a reducing sugar. All right, if take a look at cellobios here. So cellobios also has a 1,4 linkage. There's carbon one of one of the glucose uh, monosaccharides and carbon four of the other. The numbering would work exactly the same. But notice, relative to carbon one here, which is the anomeric carbon, the O points up, the CH2OH group points up, that is beta. So, and that is a beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage. And again, carbon four here of the second monosaccharide, not the anomeric, and so there's no alpha or beta to, to, to designate there. And if we do look at its anomeric carbon, though, on the second one there, at carbon number one, once again, it's in its hemiacetal form, and in solution, mutabrotation will take place. That's why it's written off to the side, and also why we can recognize it also as a reducing sugar. So both maltose and cellobios are indeed reducing sugars. Notice one other thing to note about this, uh, your enzyme amylase. You've got some in your saliva, you've got some produced by your pancreas as well, and they, your, your amylase can break this alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. And so you can digest maltose and the starch that it comes from. So however, in cellobios, you've got a beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage and amylase cannot break uh, uh, that one down, and that's why you cannot digest cellulose or cellobios, and it passes through you as fiber instead. So now we'll talk about several polysaccharides, and we'll start with starch, and starch is actually a polysaccharide composed of two similar uh, polysaccharides, amylose and amylopectin, and amylose is a linear uh, polysaccharide, uh, and it's just a bunch of glucose molars. It's a glucose polymer here, uh, and there's alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages all the way across, just like we saw in maltose. If you call, again, maltose is derived from amylose. So all alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages, and again, your amylase can digest those, uh, which is why you can process starch uh, and digest starch. Uh, amylopectin is not simply linear. It also has, you know, every 20 or 30 uh, monosaccharides, it'll have, in addition to the 1,4s, it'll have a 1,6 glycosidic linkage as well, and that's also an alpha 1,6. So alpha 1,4s, but also in the, the occasional alpha 1,6 making it branched in this case, and that's the amylopectin part. Uh, and so you should know that amylose is linear, you should know that amylopectin is branched, you should know that they both have alpha 1,4 linkages, but that amylopectin, the branches, are alpha 1,6s. And really quickly worth note, noting, I, I don't want to actually put up the structure of glycogen and waste your time here, So, but glycogen has a very similar structure to amylopectin. It is a branch structure. It also has alpha 1,4s on the linear parts, and the branches are alpha 1,6s. So, and, and technically the biggest difference is that it has, you know, more branches. <laughs> so uh, instead of every 20 to 30, maybe it's every 10 on average or something like that, that you see one of those alpha 1,6 branches. Uh, you should know that starch, uh, is the major storage uh, polysaccharide in plants and glycogen the major storage polysaccharide in animals. And moving on to cellulose, and cellulose again, uh, glucose polymer, 
And in this case, it is beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages, just like the cellobios that is derived from it. So if we partially digest cellulose, that's where cellobios comes from. And so if the cellobios has beta-1,4s, well, it makes sense that the cellulose that it comes from is composed of all uh, beta-1,4s as well. And it's a linear polymer. You're gonna find this in like plant cell walls. And again, uh, you're gonna process this as fiber because we as humans don't have an enzyme for digesting this. All right, we'll move on to talking about chitin here. So, and chitin isn't made from a pure sugar, it's made from what we call an amino sugar. So, where one of the hydroxyl groups has been replaced by a nitrogen. So, if you look at the hydroxyl group that would be normally coming off of carbon number two, well, there's a nitrogen there. And in this case, that nitrogen is not just an amine, so, which is what we traditionally think of as an amino sugar, but it's an amine that has been acetylated had an acetyl group added. And so in this case, we call this an N-acetyl glucosamine. So if it was just an amine, we'd just call it a glucosamine, but now it's an N-acetyl glucosamine. And so you often see that abbreviated as NAG, NAG, uh, in biology textbooks and things of this sort. So, but chitin here is a polymer of N-acetyl glucosamine, specifically we could say N-acetyl beta-D-glucosamine, and it's got beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages as well. Uh, and chitin you're gonna find uh, in like certain fungal cell walls, uh, but more commonly you think of it associated in the exoskeletons of like certain insects, uh, as well as arthropods like crabs and stuff like that as well. And last but not least, we'll talk about N-glycosides. And uh, an N-glycoside uh, is a sugar where the hemiacetal, that hydroxyl group of the hemiacetal has actually been replaced by some sort of nitrogen group instead. And so if you look, there's your anomeric carbon. Instead of being bonded to two oxygens, it's bonded to one oxygen and one nitrogen. That's what makes it an N-glycoside. So at the anomeric carbon where glycosides form, instead it's bonded to a nitrogen instead. All right, the most common examples that you're ever going to encounter for these N-glycosides involve RNA and DNA. So in the case of when ribose is your sugar in one of these N-glycosides with one of the common bases, uh, either purines or pyrimidines here, adenine, guanine for the purines, cytosine, uracil, and thymine for the pyrimidines. So I don't want to get too far into the biology, but I figured you're a good chance you're familiar with those. Uh, but it, when your sugar is ribose and bonded to one of those DNA or RNA bases, so we call it uh, a ribonucleoside. Uh, and when it's one of those bases and bonded to deoxyribose, notice the only difference here is that this hydroxyl group is gone. So it's a deoxygenated ribose, if you will, hence the name deoxyribose. And uh, so when the sugar is deoxyribose, we call it a deoxyribonucleoside instead. And that wraps up this lesson, and for many of you, the entire course. And I hope you found this lesson helpful, and if you did, uh, a like and a comment go a long way to helping me out with that YouTube algorithm. Uh, and if this is the last course that you ever need to use from me, I wish you the absolute best in your future studies and your career. Uh, and for those of you that might be taking physics or studying for the MCAT or the DAT or the OAT somewhere down the road, I will see you again. Happy studying.